What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. In this video, we're going to be taking a very special look at the all new 2020 Subaru Outback Onyx Edition XT. So we just got this vehicle on our lot. I mean, a matter of hours ago, I snagged it as fast as I could. The 2020 Outback has been hotly anticipated for a long time and brings some really welcome design changes um, as well as new features. Now this trim, you've got you know your standard um, procession, I guess, of trims um, from the just the premium, um, which is kind of the base model. Um, then you've got like the limited, the limited XT, uh, the Onyx edition here, and then the touring edition as well. We don't have a touring yet, so it doesn't have all the bells and whistles, but we do have a limited um, that I'm gonna be looking at in a different video. Um, but this mainly is gonna be talking about the Onyx edition here. So this is new for the 2020 year. Um, it's got some, kind of like the Forester Sport, it's got some specific elements uh, and specific kind of like body stylings um, to the Onyx trim. Some of the blacked, uh, blacked out elements and the body molding, um, and you'll see it also on the back a little bit. Um, it's kind of more of this like off-roady, kind of sportier, um, kind of just like the Forester Sport, but more of like an off-road thing instead of like a sport thing. Um, but it does still have the XT engine under the hood. Um, we'll talk about that in a minute. But um, as far as like the headlights and stuff go, yeah, uh, they're they're a little different. They have some um, you know some unique kind of sculpting there, um, but really like the front grille to me doesn't look that different um, than your typical uh, Outback or, or really just kind of within the Forester lineup or not the Forester lineup the Subaru lineup I should say, um, but it's just kind of you do have like that this kind of like um, hard plasticky uh, kind of uh, lip there down at the front fascia. You've got some fog lights down there. Um, so you got your headlights here. Uh, one kind of new-ish feature here is this front-facing camera, 180 degree uh, wide angle front-facing camera, um, which you can just kind of toggle anytime you want um, just to see you know, where the curb is or uh, going along with that like off-roady type theme, the, um, the 2020 Jeep Gladiators and some of the new Wranglers and Jeeps that you would typically do off-roading with, they have this front camera. Kind of as you can tell, you know, when you're going up this only has 8.7 inches of ground clearance, so I don't know if you want to be going up rocks, but you could, I guess, some smaller rocks, but that'll show you, you know, where you are as far as up and over, that type of stuff. Um, so let's go ahead and take a look under the hood. So now under the hood, you've got the XT engine here. So this is a 2.4 liter direct injected turbocharged DOHC 16 valve boxer engine. Uh, it's got uh, linear tronic uh, high torque CVT, uh, with an eight speed manual mode as well. Um, this will give you 260 horsepower um, and about 277 pound feet of torque. Um, all of that while giving you uh, 30 miles per gallon highway and 23 miles per gallon city. So quite a beefy engine here under the hood. I uh, haven't really driven it, uh, given it a lot of juice yet to see, um, but definitely um, you're getting your bang for your buck here with the engine. Uh, really nice uh, XT here. All right, so other than that, kind of in the front, um, you've got standard eyesight now across the board um, on all Subaru. Um, not all Subarus yet, but I think we're getting there, but uh, all Foresters and all Outbacks have standard eyesight now. So you've got uh, you know forward collision alert, uh, uh, cross traffic alert, that kind of stuff. And then I think if you bump up to the Touring, you'll get the uh, rear automatic braking. I don't think the Onyx has it, um, but you do have a couple other safety features. One specifically that I want to hit on when we get inside because they kind of changed the uh, the look of the button and kind of how it functions, which is actually kind of cool. We'll talk about that in a second. So, and no sunroof on this one either. There's a couple different packages that you can get with the Onyx. I think this is the uh, standard 21 package, but there's a standard 22 package. That may have a sunroof, not positive on that. Um, but you do have the integrated roof rails with the uh, crossbars that you can kind of retract um, whenever you want. So let's go ahead and move around to the backside of the vehicle. So now, unfortunately, I'm kind of filming in some, some bad light here. Um, so I, I'm gonna be able to give you some B-roll stuff so you can really see what I'm talking about here. Um, but these are, this is where I see more of like the new styling, how I could probably tell a 19 versus a 20 Outback. Um, you've got these kind of, uh, 
not really blacked out necessarily, but they, these taillights have this like black plastic wrap around them, which kind of gives it this more like sporty, ruggedy kind of feel to it. Um, as well as you've got this um, rear kind of splash guard bumper thing, um, as well as uh, the powdered, kind of powder coated uh, badging here. So Subaru, you got the symmetrical all wheel drive, the Outback and then the XT badges all in this kind of like powder gray, powder black kind of look to them. Um, and then you've kind of got this wider base. Um, and we saw this with the Forester, that was kind of their big, um, one of their big adjustments was they took the kind of squattier, um, squished base of the Forester and kind of smushed it out a little bit. I don't know the best terminology to use there, but it, just to give it, uh, make loading and unloading things easier. Uh, and they did the, the same kind of deal here, just kind of give it a little stretch um, that direction. So you've got, uh, the easy open lift gate, uh, rear view camera, and then you've got um, kind of all this space back here. Uh, you've got your Onyx Edition mats, as well as this uh, standard um, package. The 21 has the um, floor mats. I don't know if that's standard to the package or we just added that on when we bought the car, but um, it does have the all weather mats uh, in here as well. So you've got your, your typical fabric cloth mats right there, and then the all weather ones as well. Um, You've got these, this kind of lever system here um, to, to drop these seats, which is actually kind of nice to have. I don't think the 2019 Outback had a, depends on the trim, but it, if it had a lever system or a button system, um, but typically like on my car, my Crosstrek, uh, which is a premium, it just has a little tabs you pop up and then you have to push it manually. This one, it's not automatic necessarily, but the Touring might have that, but um, just pop them up with that lever really easy to get down. Not as easy to get up, but easy to get down. Got some little hooks back here. You've got some kind of netting for, some, for tools. Um, and then you've got a full size extra tire, spare tire down here. There it is. Yep, full size spare tire um, with all your jacks and uh, wrenches and all that kind of stuff right in there, as well as the uh, trunk liner, trunk guard there which also has that. So you can uh, kind of just have it cover the top part or you can have it go all the way down and cover uh, across the board there. I don't, I'm not sure what difference that makes if the trunk is closed, but nonetheless, it's there. And that's pretty much everything on the exterior. We talked about the roof rails uh, with the um, crossbars that can be extended. So let's go ahead, close the trunk up here and hop inside. All right, guys, now that we're inside, I think you're really gonna start to notice the difference here between the 19 and the 20s. Uh, there's a plethora of new features in here, um, as well as a lot of design changes. Um, things have been uh, kind of changed around, put in different places, things like that. Um, and we have uh, just new seating options, all kinds of stuff. So let's go ahead and just jump right into it here and start with the most obvious thing that everyone's been talking about um, with the not only the Outbacks, but as well the Legacies, and that is the all new 11.6 inch vertical screen. So let's go ahead and take a look at that. All right, so kind of how the screen works here uh, is it's kind of divided into different sections. So you don't get a true, um, you know, full 11.6 inches of, I guess, interaction necessarily as far as like apps being full screen and stuff like that. But what you get is kind of these sections. So you've got this section up top here, and then you've got like the entertainment center part right there. And then you've kind of got some software buttons here. And then you've got another section at the bottom um, that works for like your AC controls and, and things you might otherwise have uh, physical controls for. So, um, and that kind of has a negative effect when you talk about things like CarPlay and Android Auto. Um, I've got my phone plugged in right now, so I'll get CarPlay. So if I click that, um, that's what I'm getting as far as CarPlay goes. Uh, you, which makes sense uh, from, uh, I guess, a design perspective because um, Subaru can't rely on Apple to have an integration, you know, in CarPlay where it auto adjusts to, to different screen sizes. There's all different types of screen uh, aspect ratios and sizes that the software would have to recognize. And that's a lot to bake in. So, you know, it's kind of a double-edged sword there because you want uh, to have as much uh, capability and as much uh, reach as possible, being as many models as possible, but CarPlay can't just adapt to everything. So 
kind of what it does is it bakes it into this top little square here and then your normal operating system so starlink pops into there and then you've got your your you know software controls here for climate control and temperature and speed gauges and things like that so really if you think about it if you're a if you're not a starlink power user necessarily um, or we want to use built-in navigation, which I haven't been able to test if that makes it in the full screen format or not, or if you, it just puts it in a tiny window like that. But realistically, speaking truth here, if you were to get a Subaru model that doesn't have this 11.6 inch screen, but you only ever used CarPlay, it's not going to be any different than if you've got a lower trim level that has the uh, like 6.5 inch screens or whatever the size is that on that. Because CarPlay only fits into that much of the screen, which is, I don't know the exact measurement, it's maybe a little bigger than normal, but that's about uh, 6.5 inches as far as, you know, it's about that big. So really, it's great and all to have, and, and this Super's not the only one that suffers from this, really only Tesla, um, even Volvo it doesn't work like this, but maybe only Tesla is the one that, that can actually um, take full advantage of that with because their software is good enough. But most car manufacturers' software isn't good enough for an average user or, or even a power user to want to use it. So these third-party alternatives like Android Auto and Apple CarPlay really make the difference in vehicle entertainment. Um, and there's really no way to ever fully take advantage of that, that big screen. Um, so that's just my two cents. Um, you all might have a different uh, opinion or view of it, and you may be, uh, you know, you may love Starlink. And, and there are some, some nice kind of changes here to Starlink. So if we go ahead and use kind of these Android style uh, you know, navigation buttons, you've got, I guess, your car settings here. Yes, yeah, so you can control your vehicle dynamics control. Uh, the Onyx XT actually has dual X mode, um, which no other uh, trims have, which is cool. So you can, I guess, um, enable, you know, snow, dirt, normal, um, and then snow and mud, how you want your XMO to react. Auto vehicle hold, I would definitely turn that on. That's an awesome feature to have. Um, I've talked about it in my other videos, but when you come to a complete stop and you take your foot off the pedal, the brake pedal, your car just stays still. Um, driving assistance, you've got pre-collision braking and then your lane departure functions. Um, so you've got uh, your you know, warning buzzer or them actually engaging um, and then your blind spot detection and rear cross traffic alert um, toggle as well. Then you've got cruise control and uh, some other stuff, auto start stop, that's how you turn that off. If it drives you crazy that your car shuts off all the time. And then you've got just your standard uh, kind of Starlink features. They do, the, the icons do have a redesign like I talked about. Um, you can, it's not anything crazy, but it's, it's definitely there um, as far as the 19 to 20, but you've got your radio, your media, uh, your phone, um, which there it's pulling up my Apple uh, CarPlay stuff, so that maybe I should disconnect that. And I'm not going to have a Bluetooth device connected, so it's saying, hey, no Bluetooth device, what do you want to do? Um, so that's where you connect your Bluetooth. If we go to radio here, um, you can actually see that it does take up, again, <laughs> it's not the full screen, um, but it takes up a good bit. It's definitely bigger than the normal screens. Like, it's, it's a different uh, aspect ratio. So if you got like the 8.5 or the, the eight inch screen um, on some of the higher trims previous model years, it may be a little bit bigger. I don't know. It's really confusing because it's not widescreen. It's like a square format. So you definitely get, there's a lot of screen there. I'll say that much. I'm just going to leave it at that because I'm rambling. Um, apps here, uh, you've got your My Subaru app, the Starlink app and XM, uh, Sirius XM Travel Link. Uh, you've got your car info here. So you can see your driving statistics, um, as well as, uh, you know, what angle your car's at. Um, you can see your different uh, safety features there, turn them on and off, I would assume by just, uh, oh, no, you can actually read about it. So that's kind of cool. Um, gives you all kinds of information on how exactly it works. Figured you could turn them off, but maybe not. And then maintenance options, uh, you know, when your tires were scheduled, last time your oil was changed, all that kind of stuff. Um, and then you've got, you know, my Subaru and you've got settings here. Um, I would assume a lot of the stuff we just looked at is in here in settings. You've got Wi-Fi hotspot in here, um, available under camera. Let's see. Okay. You can turn the steering lines on and off. You can change your uh, language, your tire pressure. Oh, birthday list. Huh? Why would you want to do that? 
put birthdays in here. Add your whole family birthdays so your car can t your car can tell you it's your kid's birthday. Now up at the top, like we talked about, you've got um, your temperature, your time, and then some car information, uh, water temperature, oil temperature, average speed. You've got your weather. Um, here it is a million degrees, only 88, but the humidity is through the roof, so I am cooking right now. Um, then you got your quick X mode control, so that's cool. So you can just have it right there, accessible, ready to switch at any time. Um, and then Bluetooth. Okay, so this is kind of like a shortcut menu here up at the top. I wonder if you can customize this stuff. Doesn't look like it, maybe in the menus. Now down below here, um, I mentioned this earlier as well, you've got hardware or software, excuse me. You've got hardware controls here for like your um, uh, heated side mirror um, and then front, um, what would you call it? Like um, defogger kind of thing um, or defrost. Um, so you can turn the temperature up and down here with the software buttons or you can go in um, and physically do it with the um, software buttons here. And you can turn the heat seater on, um, heat seater, the seat heater on there. Um, and then you can sync up your passenger and your driver's side temperatures if you want to do that. If you don't prefer to have your own setting there, I always like to have mine on uh, not synced because my wife likes it uh, a little bit colder than I do. Um, now you can go ahead and push this, and this will give you a cool little view here um, of where the AC is coming out or the heat's coming out, depending on your season. Um, just kind of with these little lines here. So now it's underneath, and then both just underneath and then up at the windshield and at my feet and you can change the fan speed here as well go ahead and crank it to max ac because i'm dying so back down. Um, and then you've got your fan uh, speed controls here you can just tap those and then you've got your seat heaters which um, i definitely do not want those on um, yeah, so that's pretty much everything there. Let's go ahead and take a look at the rear view camera while we're here. So there is your rear view camera. Now, uh, as we pointed out earlier, there is also a camera in the front. Uh, now the way you would access this is not doing this. Now you've got these colored level markers, so that kind of shows you uh, don't get in the red, yellow, and you're getting close, green, you're safe as far as things behind you. I'm not sure if these have the little bars on it too that uh, kind of give you an alert when stuff's coming, but I know the higher trims probably have that. Um, but if you go back into park and then you push this little button here next to the uh, shift knob, that's gonna bring up your front view camera there. So that's just giving you uh, kind of that red line indicating your where hypothetically or, or, or figuratively your, your front bumper exists, you just can't see it because of the wide angle lens there. So definitely don't run anything into that red line, otherwise your front bumper is not gonna be happy with you. Now moving on over here to the steering wheel, not a lot has changed uh, as far as the physical design of the steering wheel. It's very um, on brand um, with the other Subarus that you're used to seeing. Um, you've got you know your adaptive cruise control buttons, you've got uh, volume controls, uh, you can navigate the little uh, color display up top there, um, get all your driving information. You can see your, your, you know, when your car is leaning out of a lane, all that kind of good stuff, um, all right there. Just, you know, phone control, everything you're used to seeing. Um, you've got your, your paddle shifters here on the back for that automatic or that uh, eight speed manual mode that we talked about earlier. Um, now this button, when I was first sitting in here, kind of caught me, threw me for a loop here. Um, this one right here. Yeah, so they're just calling it lane center from what I can tell. Now what this is going to do is it it's kind of replacing lane keep assist for 2020. And it basically what if you're driving and you've got good painted lines on the road when you're you know when your car when it shows you green lines up there um, at the top of the dash, you know that the camera is seeing good clean lines. It, if you push that button, it's going to center you in the lane. Now I'm going to definitely give this a try in a little bit to test it and I'll, I'll report back on that. But um, I have also been told that it will keep you centered around curves, which is definitely new because um, that's a whole, uh, you know, whole different deal all in itself. That's definitely cool. So we'll, we'll definitely give that a try and report back on that later. But that's the only thing really that stood out here on the steering wheel as a different feature. Now down here, um, you've got 
you know, your trunk buttons, um, as well as turning the brightness up on the display. Um, over here, you've got a push to start engine there. Now down here, as far as the um, shift knob goes, you just have, uh, you know, standard and then your manual mode here. You've got electronic parking brake, um, that uh, front view camera button we talked about. And then down here, you have an aux port as well as two 2.1 USB-A ports. Um, inside the glove box, you have a uh, one 12 volt power outlet, no USBs inside the glove box that I can see. Um, and then no more power down there either. Um, so just two USBs in the front and the aux cord. Um, now backing it up a little bit, you've got an auto dimming uh, home link rear view mirror there um, with your programmable programmable uh, garage buttons there, as well as eyesight up here. Uh, no sunroof again, like we talked about. So just a standard audio system here on the Onyx edition, but you can get the Harman Kardon system on some higher trims. Now, as far as design changes in the cabin here, like I talked about, you, I mean, definitely have the new screen. That's a huge design change there, but you also have this kind of reworked uh, center console here with this little pocket thing here, uh, kind of dips down. Um, kind of rearranged icons uh, or um, kind of actions here. And then uh, cup holders look a little different. They have these kind of pucks in them. So if you, you know, it kind of keeps stuff from getting down in there. You can just kind of pop this out and wash that, which is cool. Um, this glove box is kind of like a two part glove box here. So you've got two different knobs or two different, I guess, like grips you can pull. Like one will open the whole thing. And then the second one will just, you know, you can put cards or change or you know a phone case or something I mean you can fit some stuff in there um, and then you do have this kind of little lip here um, that I haven't seen before but you can kind of store stuff it's got some like rubbery grippy uh, material right there um, and then the whole cabin is kind of wrapped and you'll be able to see it here on these seats um, a little bit better but the entire cabin is wrapped in this two-tone StarTex um, weather resistant um, uh, material basically um, it, it it's almost like I don't want to call it like vinyl-y but it's it's definitely you can tell this is rugged I mean you could just dump anything on this I feel like and it would just wash right off it's very like uh, feels a little bit like a like a raincoat um, it's got this like neon green accent stitching um, all across it and it is two-tone like I mentioned so you got kind of a darker gray here and then a lighter gray here um, and that that whole like concept kind of wraps the vehicle now I don't think what's on the doors um, is actually um, well some parts of it are some of the pieces I think are the same kind of uh, two-tone um, star uh material but there is some like um, plasticky pieces and some like faux leather pieces also around and you do have additional accent stitching that's kind of just a white color um, up here and on the door panels as well so kind of a really actually unique um, material and feel from what we're used to seeing um, on some other supers especially the outback now in the back you've got the same um, so now in the back you've got the same kind of feel going um, you've got you know, three seats back there with the center one that drops down has the cup holders. Uh, you've got some some ports back there as well as uh, heated seats in the back, which is awesome. So, all right, guys, and that is the first look at the all new 2020 Subaru Outback Onyx Edition XT. Now, like I mentioned before and have said a couple times in this video, we do have a limited as well. Um, so I'm going to take a look at that um, in another in a completely separate video here. But I just wanted you to to kind of see uh, what this new trim is all about and the new features that it has and some of the design cues that will carry over to the limited to the touring to all the trims um, just with the new design and stuff like that um, but don't forget to leave us a comment down below telling us what your favorite part of the 2020 outback is are you getting your hands on one please let us know um, we got plenty of them if you want to come get one from us um, as well as leave a like if you love the video and subscribe uh, so you can be among the first to see the review of the limited as well as the touring and all kinds of other videos on the all-new outback Thanks again for watching, guys, and we'll see you in the next one.